Well, hello, this is week five, the time-lapse edition of my deadly spider enclosure, that is Redback Spiders, which I will prove to you is one of the most awesome spiders on the planet. This is early in the week because both skinks are alive, maybe you can see them scamping around in here, and you can see the large female Redback Spider going down and feeding on the Devil Bug. As people inform me, that Devil Bug is really called a Mole Cricket. So I am actually learning something from my very, very good audience. Before we go any further in this video, I better throw up that spider warning. Warning, this video contains graphic footage of deadly spiders doing very deadly things. So don't mess with these deadly spiders. I know there are lots of comments and people said it was cruel to add the skinks into the spider home here. I was introducing the skinks, hopefully to be in time with the spider egg sacs opening up. I know for a fact these skinks will feed on spiderlings, uh, but sadly I got the timing a little bit wrong. In fact, I was out by them, I think, a week and a half. One thing about the spider tank here is that I've noticed that either the spiders will react to something virtually instantly and kill it, or there'll be a bit of a, a time delay. The skinks had a fair bit of time in this tank roaming about doing their thing, doing a lot of digging. They sort of had a hideout behind the bulldozer blade, uh, but initially I couldn't see much threatening activity from the redback spiders towards the skinks. But as so often that I've seen in this tank here, uh, it only takes one little thing to upset the apple cart, and then trouble starts to really happen. Over the weeks in studying these redback spiders, one constant has been watching them feed, and the feeding process can go on for hours, it can go on for days. They never seem to lose their appetite for food. Uh, I often think they do thrill kills, but then what I'll find is that there might be something left there dead, and other spiders will come and feed on the carcass, especially the male. The male will come along and feed on the carcass, but watching the females feed is quite amazing. They have this thing where they will puffer something up with air and it looks like then they suck it. And you can also see on their back ends how it looks like a balloon inflating and deflating. Now that's something that you don't read on the wiki pages talking about these spiders. You never get described to you the gory details of the way these spiders feed. It's quite fascinating. I separated the way the time-lapse video of the spider tank from the normal week videos because the time-lapse video starts to reveal the spider's world in a very different way. Normally, if you sit next to this tank for a couple of hours or half a day, it will feel like nothing happens. It seems like they don't do very much at all, but the time-lapse video reveals that there are many things going on inside this tank, and it can be extremely dynamic. I'm about to introduce something into this tank that causes total and utter chaos, and we will see just how deadly and dangerous the redback spider is up against something which is very fearsome. So I introduce into my redback spider home some Christmas beetles, especially one of the larger ones that you can sometimes find. These beetles are called Christmas beetles because they sort of appear at Christmas time and the larger one was an agitator in this tank and that's only going to mean a death sentence. These beetles are very powerful, they've got extremely strong legs and I was very curious to see if a redback spider could use its amazing web to trap and then bind up this beetle and then give it the fatal bite. In real time, for the redback spider to take control over this beetle, it took well over an hour. It was a completely epic battle, which I thought was never going to finish. The addition of the Christmas beetles into the tank was nothing to do about being a predator, it was more to do about putting something in there that was extremely strong. If ever you put a Christmas beetle into your hand, be it one of the little ones as well, you'll know how strong their legs are. And that larger Christmas beetle would be a major task to capture for the redback spider. As I'm learning with this redback spider tank, every time I introduce a critter and the redback spider takes control, it's another badge of honour for the redback spider. It's funny, people say it's only a small spider, it's got tiny fangs, how can it be dangerous? But I think we're starting to see, it's not about the size of the spider or your fang size, it's about the way you use your weapons, and I think the major weapon the redback spider has got is its web and the way that it uses it in a very different way to many other spiders. Well, as you can see, the beetle had disrupted the egg sacs. Um, I'm yet to really fully understand what damage was done there, but the redback spider just did not give up in trying to quell the strength of this beetle. It must have got a bite in there somewhere, because as I found out, the beetle started to get quieter and quieter until there was basically no movement left in there. And I'll be quite honest here, I never ever thought that a redback spider could take control over one of those large and very powerful and strong beetles. But hey, I've been proven wrong again. I'm learning lots of things by watching these redback spiders in this spider home. 
The next piece of video is quite complex and I'll explain a few things here as best I can from what I'm witnessing going on. Uh, well first up, there is a skink in trouble up the back there. I think it's been paralyzed in the back legs and it's got its tail caught up around some of the vegetation in here. In fact, I think it's also got a little bit of spiderweb caught up in its tail as well. Up in the foreground is of course a large beetle there. There is a smaller beetle sort of attached to it as well. I notice the redbacks like to combine meals so it's a mixed plate of food. There is two large females there. One is sort of hiding behind having a feed. I believe that's the one that's caught the beetle and the other large female is probably wishing it could come in for a feed. Now sometimes you'll see them share but two dominant females will tend not to share a meal from what I can see. You'll often see the male will scamper in for a bit of a feed, maybe a smaller female, but these two alpha females, as I'm calling them, are the two most dominant redbacks in this spider tank. And what I'm learning about these spiders in this very controlled environment is often in nature people will talk about dominant males. In this spider tank here, what we've got going is dominant females, and these dominant females are expert killers. And this next bit of footage will be very distressing if you're a skink fan or a lizard fan. In the background you can see there is the skink which has been bitten, it's riling in pain. So with that skink in lots and lots of trouble, it shows that sometimes the redbacks can kill in a very indirect way. Uh, as I've often said, there seems to be thrill kills that go on, but there also seems to be some of the web caught round the very tip of the lizard's tail and I think every time you get caught in the web of these redback spiders your history. I know there's been quite a few comments in relation to putting the skinks into the spider tank and it was wrong to do and all the rest of it but I can tell you in my backyard that skinks and redback spiders would live side by side. The skinks would definitely eat the spiderlings and I am absolutely certain that if a skink got caught up in a redback spider's web these spiders would take it out. The redback spider will take advantage of anything that gets caught in its web. It sees anything as a meal. And as we've so often seen in the spider tank, if anything gets caught in that very super sticky web that the redback spider produces, it is history. I saw a very astute comment from someone who was watching one of the earlier videos and they said, hey, if you're going to take out a redback spider, you wouldn't go punching it in the face. You would punch it in the bum. You would punch it in the bum hard and fast. And I think once you've punched this spider in the bum, and if you can take out the area that makes the web, well then the fight may be yours. I know it doesn't sound pretty to punch something in the bum to get a win, but that's what you've got to do if you're up against one of these spiders. Well, I hope you learned something in this video. I learned nothing again, and I'm sure there'll be a billion comments. What happened to Gonzo? Well, this is between week four and five. Gonzo was introduced in week five, so let's see who actually watches the video versus who lays comments in against this video. And just before we go, we'll get another illustration of the magnificent killing ability of the redback spider. A cricket has come over to share the meal of those beetles, like the beetle fest that the redback spider has made, but that cricket has actually got caught up in that super sticky web that the redback so easily makes. And guess what happens to the cricket? It becomes another meal for that redback spider, and the redback spider conglomerates those beetles together with the cricket there, what an amazing smorgasbord of insect food for that redback spider and again confirmation that these spiders will basically kill even when they're not hungry at all. As I've said so often, never mess with these nasty girls because they just never know when to stop. I better leave this video here, I'm sure the YouTube algorithm will destroy it. As always, thanks for watching and bye for now.